Hey everybody, I'm the Drink Pro. Today we're comparing the first and last pours of Sam Houston 14 year old bourbon. What's up everybody? Kyle the Drink Pro here with you yet again. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I like to start by thanking my fans, thanking all the people that watch this show, and please continue watching. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. Any way you can support the channel is amazingly helpful. It's the reason I can keep doing this. Today, I've got a fun little experiment we're gonna do that's kind of in response to a comment and kind of just something I wanted to do. Very recently, somebody wrote a comment on one of my videos about oxidation. Um, I believe I misspoke and said oxidization previously, but it's oxidation. Now, oxidation is the process by which oxygen reacts with other chemicals to create new chemicals. It's basically just a chemical reaction. The most classic example of oxidation in most people's minds is rusting. Iron rusting is iron interacting with oxygen to create a new product, rust. Now you might say, Kyle, why are we talking about oxidation on a drinking channel? You know, we're supposed to be drinking, having a good time, and you're trying to bring chemistry into this and science into this? Well, there's a very specific reason I'm talking about this. The difference between a whiskey when you first open it, the same thing with wine, cognac, and a lot of other spirits, this first taste and the last taste might be significantly different. And there's a lot of question about why that is. The general consensus is that there's a process called oxidation occurring. Oxygen is interacting with some of the you know products that are in these, these pores, specifically with whiskey, the tannins are often what is cited as something to be interacted with. And it affects and usually degrades the flavor of the whiskey. Now, there's an article I'll be posting below uh, in the description of this video that sort of challenges that theory. It's, it was written by someone who I believe is a PhD in chemistry. Uh, it is sort of just a one-off post. I haven't been able to find more support for this person's theory, but it's very interesting because it shows that somebody is thinking about this from a different perspective. It is not a consensus necessarily that oxidation affects whiskey the way we think it does. And part of what this article cites to is several experiments that have been done showing a half full bottle, a three quarters full bottle, and a totally full bottle of whiskey over a long period of time, over six months, over a year, over two years, and seeing if there's any effect to the flavor. And essentially the results are there was very little effect based on time. That would suggest that oxidation isn't happening. It's not what is going on. There's something else perhaps that's occurring. I think it's good for you guys to know this is a conversation in the whiskey world. You're going to hear about oxidation probably a lot if you start to collect bottles and keep bottles open for a long period period of time. So I want you guys to be informed and know that this is a conversation that needs to be had and maybe needs to be thought out more thoroughly. I will say for some of you professionals out there that may know more about this than me, I would love to find some really high quality resources about the oxidation of whiskey. I know there are some distiller guides that may have some information on this, but I'm just really curious about oxidation after the whiskey leaves the barrel. You know, in these bottles, is there really oxidation happening or is it some other process? And what experiments, what science do we have to back up that information? Because it's unclear to me that there's really a consensus on this. I've seen a lot of conjecture online from people who claim to be, you know, scientists and have science backgrounds, but they don't cite any data sources. So I'd love to see what's actually out there. Now, some of you people that aren't as nerdy as I am maybe, aren't gonna wanna dig into the science of oxidation and whether it has an effect on whiskey and what that effect looks like and what the source material is on the science behind that. I get it, I get it, you don't wanna know about that. All you need to understand for your purposes is that whiskey does degrade in a bottle over time once it reaches a certain fill level. Typically, it's gonna be something low like this. If your bottle is over half full, you're probably gonna be okay for several years. There's a lot of debate about how long you should leave bottles open, what you can do to preserve them, but at the end of the day, just realize that if you're gonna have a whiskey bottle open for a long period of time, your best bet is to get some sort of neutral gas to fill the bottle so that it cannot evaporate any alcohol and no oxygen can have contact with the liquid. That'll avoid oxidation and it will avoid any evaporation. So it will fix any problem no matter what is actually happening in the bottle. And what I'm gonna do here today is sort of a proof of concept to show that whatever's happening is actually happening. I have here in this bottle the neck pour 
from this bottle. Now this is the Sam Houston 14 year old bourbon. It's a pretty recent release. And a lot of these have different batch numbers on the side. This is Kentucky 01. Now this bottle has a lot of good information on it. It tells us it's from Bardstown. It tells us it was a number four char. It gives the mash bill on the side here. Uh, I believe it's 74% corn, 18% rye, and 8% malted barley. And it also tells us that it's 14 years and one month old and it's a blend of three different barrels. Now it says it's from Bardstown and they don't tell you the source on it, but after tasting it, you can know immediately that it's Barton. Barton has a very particular profile for me and it became very obvious right away that this was a Barton product. Friend of the show, Mike Halliday, who helped me uh, procure this bottle, saved the first pour from the bottle and filled the remainder of this bottle with argon gas. Now argon gas is a neutral gas. It makes sure there's no oxygen getting in there to react with the whiskey. It makes sure that there's no space for evaporation of alcohol. This means that no matter what process is occurring to make whiskey degrade over time, it won't occur in this little bottle. Big shout out to Mike Halliday for putting this experiment together and for locating the Sam Houston 14. Cheers to him. It's the last bit of the Sam Houston, so we're gonna just kill it in the glass. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and nose these whiskeys side by side and see what the differences are. I'll tell you what, on the nose, the differences are not very noticeable. Now, I will say these haven't been open that long. Uh, I believe this bottle was open maybe a couple of months. And so, although there was only one pour left in the bottle, it hasn't had a lot of time to be exposed to the elements. But still, if I had to nail it down, this one is slightly softer. I get a little bit more sharpness. I get a little bit more of the grain note and the sharp sweetness on the left here. Whereas on the right, it's more fruity. The banana kind of comes out a little bit more prominently. I gotta tell you, there's very little difference between the two of these. I think that if I wasn't looking for the difference, I may not be able to spot it. So that's an important thing to note, is that several months in a very mostly full bottle didn't really make a difference. All right, let's go ahead and taste these pours. I'm gonna start with the one that's been open longer because my suspicion is it's going to be a little bit weaker because some of the alcohol may have evaporated. That 18% rye really shows up for me. I get that nice rye grain. I get um, more sweetness than I expected, honestly. Yeah, rye grain into the vanilla, into a honeyed note. Mid palate is a little bit bitter and black walnut. It's actually quite nutty. The nut note is really prominent. Man, I get the walnut and the pecan. And the finish is pretty long on this. Uh, but it's not very harsh. It's sort of a soft, woody, nutty. Now it is 98 proof, so it's going to be a little bit softer and more gentle than a lot of the things I sample on this channel, but uh, it's a really smooth drinker. It's really good uh, and well balanced in my mind. It's interesting how late the vanilla shows up. You get the grain, I get almost this bready quality, and then maybe a hint of citrus, and then the vanilla then shows up, almost in the mid palate. Ooh, I'm starting to get a little bit of heat just a little bit, um, like Red Hots, just a touch though, like a soft Red Hot, <laughs> like a like a easy sipping Red Hot. <laughs> but I don't get the cinnamon, I just get that burn, that little bit of tingle. All right, let's go ahead and try the one that was the fresh crack, essentially, that was in Argon Gas. Oh, interesting. So I think I actually find it a little less complex. It's more dense, it's sharper. The rye grain is a lot more prominent and dominating in this initial pour. Um, it starts off rye and then it just really dissipates into not much else. Let me take another sip and see if I can't pull out some new ones. Yeah, not nearly the same amount of complexity. That's really interesting. And I think it's important to note the time difference on these whiskeys. I only left this bottle open a couple months. The whiskey is definitely more nuanced. I get a lot more different notes. And while the rye spice may have been a lot more quiet than it was in this initial pour, the other notes really start to come out. That vanilla and caramel really become prominent. The nuttiness, which is almost entirely missing from the mid palate on the initial pour, it becomes really beautiful and lingering and, and, and delicate almost in this pour that's been open for several months. Yeah, that rye grain and bitterness is really prominent up front where the bitterness kind of came in in the mid palate and the finish along with this nuttiness and oakiness on the more opened up older pour. The one that was brand new right out of the argon filled bottle just comes at you with a punch of sharp rye, bitterness. You get a little bit of the honey, you get a little bit of the vanilla, but 
the nuttiness is just gone. It's just not there. And the woodiness uh, is much narrower. It's not as soft and delicate and open. I think that really speaks to what happens when whiskey has had a chance to open up. The fruitiness on the older port is a lot more diverse. I basically get banana. I get banana, I get breadiness, I get rye, and then bitter wood on the brand new pour. But the fruitiness is a lot more nuanced and broad, maybe a little bit of apple, maybe a little bit of berry. It's a much more interesting pour, honestly, after it's been open for a while. People always talk about the degradation of whiskey and how if you leave a bottle open too long or the fill line's too low, it actually becomes worse. This is an example of one becoming better and opening up and having a chance to breathe a little. A lot of times you'll see that with higher proof whiskeys in my experience, but this is a relatively low proof whiskey that also benefited from being open for a couple of months. And I will say like, because it was down to one pour, that sort of accelerated the openness. I would say if you have a bottle of this that's half full, it'll probably be at its peak around six months, maybe a year. That opening up can happen and does happen. It may be slight, they may be small increments, but the difference is noticeable. I would love to have done this blind. It didn't really work out that way tonight, but to me, the difference is not what I was expecting. I was expecting this one to be worse. And that kind of, confirms my feeling that this wasn't just confirmation bias because if it was confirmation bias this would have just been not as good but it actually opened up in a way that i liked more although the noses are very very similar the fact that this opened up in a way i liked more when i expected it to be worse and weaker and not as interesting to me, that's a testament to the fact that this isn't just some expectation being fulfilled. You know, I am a lifelong student. I love learning things. I love exploring new things. And whiskey and alcohol is no exception. I call myself the drink pro, but part of being a professional is recognizing that you can learn things too. And you never quite feel like you have it all under a grasp. If you look at master distillers of some of the biggest brands out there, they are still learning things after 30 or 40 years on the job. 30 or 40 years dealing with whiskey, they're still finding new things to discover. And that discovering mentality and that desire for learning and bettering yourself is what it's all about. If you want to be a whiskey professional, if you want to be a drinking professional, keep an open mind, try to find new things and explore and learn. So this was an experience in self-education and I expect to see more education in the comments so thank you guys so much for watching I hope you take this with a grain of salt because I am NOT a scientist and I don't claim to be but I hope you had fun thank you all so much for watching and you all keep drinking like professionals cheers